Hi guys and gals, Coops here from Game Slobs. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you this very special skill I've created called Lucky Sevens. I'll also be sharing the animation palette with you via my Google Drive and forum posts, as well as showing you how you can set up this nifty little skill. First of all, you will need Yanfly's action sequence, so if you don't have that yet, go ahead and download it from yanfly.moe and check out all the other plugins while you're there. Yanfly has an amazing range of plugins to add that little extra edge to your games. Now don't forget that all my videos are uploaded as and when I get around to completing animation palettes and editing videos together. So to keep up to date with all the latest resources I have to offer, make sure you hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon to turn on notifications. I really appreciate all of your support. So first let's look at the skill in the database. Scope is for random enemies, just to add that extra layer of randomness to the skill. It's a certain hit, as I personally don't want the skill to be reflectable, um, but you can change that if you like, it's entirely up to you. Also, feel free to change the scope too, but keep in mind that if you change it to all enemies, it will hit all enemies at once with the same value, whereas any other scope will run the sequence individually for each target and will therefore select a different damage amount, which I think is pretty neat. Notice as well that there is no damage formula for this skill. That's because all damage is predetermined within the action sequence itself. So let's go ahead and take a look at the action sequence. So first thing that you're going to need is two spare variables. In my case, I've used variable 21 and 22. Just FYI, I have 10 random variables set up for my game. These variables don't store anything long term and are simply used for skills and temporary values within my game. I strongly recommend that you do the same as it is extremely handy to have them. It's very doubtful I'll ever have an event or skill that will require all 10 variables, but much like wallpaper, it's better to have too many than not enough. Another award winning analogy by Coops. Each of the two variables will determine firstly what the damage amount will be. I've used variable 22 for this. As there are five different values of damage for this skill, I need variable 22 to select one of these values at random. That is where all this math stuff comes in. So for those of you who don't know what it is, I'll quickly sum it up for you. Math.random will select an integer, aka number, between 0 and 1. To make it select higher values, you put times by and then the number of options available. Keep in mind that it can get confusing since it counts 0 as your first integer. Math.floor will be needed as well since math.random can also select a decimal integer. So not just 0 or 1, it could be 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3333, could be any of them. But RPG Maker MV variables don't do decimals, they are way too mainstream for that. So therefore math.floor tells math.random to behave itself and only select whole numbers, none of this decimal malarkey. So now the variable 22 has selected a number between 0 and 4, we want to set up variable 21 to be our percentage value. So as always, I've set it to select a number between 0 and 99, so 100 different integers to choose from. Don't worry, you'll see why soon. So now we have this scary looking if statement tree. Dum dum dum! Sorry, I can't afford sound effects. Let's just break it down to this single branch and you'll pretty much get it. So if variable 21, our random number between 0 and 99, is less than or equal to the user's luck and variable 22 is equal to 0, then minus 0% of target's HP and show it. Else, if variable 21, again, our random number between 0 and 99, is greater than the user's luck and variable 22 is equal to 0, then add 0% HP to the target and show it. And end. Stop. Halt. Go no further. So the script here basically does one or the other. The important thing here is the user's luck. My character has 15 luck at level 1, which means there is a 15% chance that the skill will do damage to the enemy. 
That also means there is an 85% chance that it will heal the enemy instead. I gotta say, I am not loving those odds. But as your character levels up, uses stat potions and some random dude's custom parameter plugin, or just outright cheats, the chance of landing a damage attack rises since your luck will go up. So let's just say at level 25 our character has 60 luck. Nice. That means you have a 60% chance of landing a damage attack as opposed to the 40% chance of healing. I like those odds much better, Ara. So let's now look at the rest of the tree. See now, you can have as much luck as you like. There is still a 1 in 5 chance that this skill will do 0 damage, since if variable 22 selects 0 as its random number, then sorry, 0 damage. If it selects 1, then it will do plus or minus 7 HP. If it selects 2, then it deals plus or minus 77 damage. 3 does plus or minus 777. And 4 will do plus or minus 7777 damage. So it's in the player's best interest to make sure their character's luck gets boosted somehow to increase the chance of dealing damage, and then cross their fingers and hope they get the lucky 7,777 hit, as opposed to the unlucky zero damage hit. And that is it! Don't forget to change the variable values to match the ones in your own game, and feel free to change the damage amounts to any value that you like. You could mix it up and have something like, if variable 21 is equal to zero, it heals for 7,777, or does zero damage. If it's one, then it heals for 777, or does 7 damage. Just play around with it. You can add more branches by just doing a simple copy paste and having a fifth branch that does plus or minus 77,000 damage. But that's entirely up to you. As always, I'll put the action sequence in the description below. Just be sure to paste it into Notepad and Control H and replace the brackets with angle brackets since YouTube doesn't allow them in their video descriptions. Also, don't forget to visit my Google Drive where you can find a nice variety of my own custom-made animation palettes free to use in commercial and free games. Just be sure to credit Koopziana within your game somewhere. And as always, if you found this video helpful, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below and let me know if there is a skill you need help with and I'll see what I can do to help you out. Happy gaming and I'll see you next time.